Instagram, so I thought I would do a video for you guys on how I edit my Instagrams. Um, I had a couple girls message me um, recently asking if I sell presets, and I do not. I don't edit my photos in Lightroom. I use VSCO um, for my filters and a couple of different apps, but I'll go through that with you guys in this tutorial. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. So basically after I've taken about a thousand photos of what Danny thinks is the same thing over and over again, um, I will go through and pick my favorites. So for example, these are all just the raw images I did of a, of a, a flat lay um, for my blog post on my favorite skincare products. So whatever ones I like the most, I'll just go through and favorite them and so that it puts them into a separate category to make things easier for editing. So if I go into my favorites, it's got all of my photos that I've favorited. So it makes things easier for when I'm trying to find a specific photo um, and it just helps weed out the ones where I look like disgusting or my eyes are half closed or... I should say also when I am shooting my looks and going to post a photo on Instagram, I try to sort of stick with the same um, the same sort of color scheme. I love neutrals and I love blush pink, uh, but if there is, for example, like a really pretty red dress that I wanted to shoot and wear and post, I would just try and work a little bit of red into my theme. So I've got my three photos loaded in that I'm wanting to edit and the first thing that I'll do is I will go into the photo and I'll pick a filter. I used to be A6 ride or die. All my photos are edited with A6 no matter what. I absolutely loved that filter. Um, I loved it because it made my blonde blonde and it made my skin look kind of more tan. Um, so I really, really love that filter. I've since gravitated more towards M5. I almost use M5 for pretty much everything, every single photo. Um, I'll use A6 if I kind of want it to look a little bit more punchy. Um, so I kind of swap a little bit between A6 and M5. I also really like S2. So to give you an example, that's S2. Um, it's a little bit more calm than A6. Like it's not as punchy to me. It makes things a little bit more exposed, I find. M5 and A6. So those are pretty much the only filters I'll use and I'll switch back and forth between those. So for this photo, I think I did M5, and I love M5 because it kind of makes things really like, I don't know what better word to use than like creamy, like it just kind of like makes everything soft and like kind of warm, and I just, I really love it. So I always tone it down though, I never use the filter at full capacity except for A6, I sometimes do it at full, but M5 I pretty much never do unless it's a photo of like a flat lay or something that doesn't have humans in it because it can just make your skin look super yellow and orange. So I'll go in and I will tone down the the filter, usually to about like a seven, seven and a half. Um, and then I will always go in and adjust the white balance. So you can do uh, like a cooler image or a warmer image and then also adjust the greens and the pinks. I do sometimes like to up the pinks in my photos, but not usually. Um, but if I'm using M5, I'll usually tone it down, um, like bring the temperature down a little bit. So I'm going to do about, probably about there, um, just minus 0.5 to bring the, the warmer tones down a little bit. I'll also use the sharpen tool and just sharpen the image just a little bit, probably about to like a one. Sometimes I'll use contrast. It really depends on the image. Um, lately I've, I used to always up the contrast, but lately I've kind of been liking it down a little bit. So I'll probably bring it down just to like minus 0.3. And then the exposure. So obviously it changes the brightness and the darkness of the photo. Um, usually, again, if there's no people in the photo, like it's a flat lay, I'll up the exposure a little bit just because I kind of like that bright sort of effect. But if I'm in the photo, I'll sometimes bring the exposure down a little bit just because it makes me look a little bit more tan. Um, this photo I think I'm going to pretty much leave. I think it's good with the exposure there. Um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Sometimes I'll take the saturation down, but I think this one's fine. I'll just leave that. Um, 
So I think that's pretty much good. So I'm going to save that. And then usually if I have a bunch of the same photos that I'm editing, for example, like all of, all of these ones here, I will just go in, click the photo, click the little three dots, copy edits, and then I can just select all the photos that I want to be the same, click the three dots, and paste edits. But obviously for this, I'm just doing the one. So then I'll just click on that photo, hit the three dots, and save to camera roll. I always save an actual size because it is obviously the most highest resolution, so the photo is going to be the best quality. Um, the next thing I'll usually do is go into Facetune. And I will open the photo. Okay, so here I have my photo, and the one thing I always do in Facetune is I'll use the whiten tool, and especially when I'm using the filter A5 because it makes your whites kind of a little, not A5, M5, it makes your whites a little bit um, yellowy, so I always like to go in and whiten the whites of my eyes just because it makes them pop a little bit more and makes them more of a natural color. It doesn't look, I don't know, I feel like it can look super tired with, um, with the M5 filter. So I'll do that, and then also since my hair is, with the M5 filter, it goes a little bit yellow, I'll just take the whiten tool and any spots that are like super, super yellow, I'll just touch over. So any of just like the darker yellowy spots, I obviously don't want to go on here and like, because it makes it really white and almost gray sometimes, so I'll take that out. And so if we go, we can hit this little um, circle in the bottom right corner and see the before and after. So you can see it's just the tiniest bit brighter, but to me it, it looks so much nicer like that. Um, the next thing I'll do is, um, and again also with the whitening tool, if I'm standing in front of a white building or there's just something in the photo that I want a little bit whiter and brighter, I'll also use the whitening tool and just whiten the background a little bit. Um, but this is fine. And so the next thing I'll do is I will always take my, go into details, and oh, I will put extra details into things like jewelry, um, anything that is kind of like reflecting light because I feel like it looks a lot more pretty when it's got extra details in it. Um, and sometimes the, the clothing that I'm wearing, if it, uh, if I want it to pop a little bit more, I'll put some extra details in. But so for this one, I will put extra details in my two necklaces that I'm wearing just to make them kind of like shiny and pop a little bit more. And then I'll also do it just a little bit on my eyes. If you do it on your, um, your lashes, it kind of makes them a little bit darker too, which is nice. And then I always like to do it on my sunglasses, especially, especially if they are reflecting things because I just feel like it makes it look pretty. Sometimes I'll do my roots because I kind of actually like the, the look of my roots and how they pop, so I'll do that. Um, but sometimes you have to be careful with the details tool, especially with doing your eyes, because sometimes people just go so heavy with it and it just looks makes you look insane. Like I don't know if this photo you'll really be able to tell, but like if I really like that looks so weird. So I'm just gonna go in and tone that down a little bit. So it's just the slightest bit. It still is kind of too strong, so take a little bit more out. So that's pretty much what I'll do with the details tool. And then the other tool that I use in um, Facetune is Smooth. So on this particular photo, my spray tan was starting to come off right here, and that just looks like I have leprosy. So I'll take my Smooth tool and I'll just smooth out that kind of unevenness there. And again, I just kind of do like a once over of my skin just to make everything a little bit smoother. I don't like see this as like discoloration there, so I'll go in pretty hard there. But just to give everything just a little bit more of a smooth look, nothing too intense. Like you can see, I'll show you, like I pretty much just do, like you can, it's the smallest difference, but it just makes everything a little bit more smooth. Um, there are sometimes, like sometimes I'll see people on Instagram or just on Facebook and they'll just completely go in and smooth, 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 smooth everything. I want my face to look like it's been photoshopped by, I don't know who, but, and like, like you can totally tell that that's just so 
blurry, when my face has no definition, you can totally tell that it's been overly um, smoothed. So I'm just going to go in and erase that and then just add in just the smallest amount of smoothness. You can see the before and after. It's really just the smallest amount. Um, and then the only other tool I'll use in Facetune is um, the patch tool. This is great if there's something in the photo that you don't want to have in the photo. So people in the background or um, sometimes I've had where there's like a discoloration or like leaves on the ground that I don't like. And I'll just take the patch tool. Say for example, I want that pop can gone. And you just like fiddle around with it and try and try and get it out as much as possible. Um, but obviously this photo is fine for that. So that's pretty much all I'll do in Facetune. Like if you hit this little button, the before and after, it's the most minute little changes. It's nothing too crazy. Just kind of helps soften everything and just bring the image together. So then I'll go ahead and I will save to camera roll. Alright, and the next app that I use, sometimes I'll use Snapseed and I'll show you why I use Snapseed. So if we go into Snapseed and we open the photo. I'll take the select tool and I will tap where I want it to be a little bit brighter and I'll up the brightness and I'll bring it in the red. You can move your fingers in and out to adjust the width of the brightness and I'll just kind of hone in on whatever area is I want to be brighter and you can up and down the brightness so I'll just bring it up a little bit and you can see that that dark area of my face is now a little bit brighter but this photo I'm not going to do that so I actually don't know how you, oh there you go, undo so leave it as it is. Um, and that's pretty much, oh I can also sometimes I'll do, I'll take the brush tool if I feel like I'm looking super, super pale, I will go in and with the exposure down, I'll just make myself a little more tan. This obviously takes a lot of time and effort and work, so I almost never do it, but it will definitely make you look a lot more tan. And then you can brighten up the overall photo in general so that the background and everything else is brighter, but you don't look like a ghost. Pretty much the last thing I'll do is I'll go into Darkroom. Darkroom is pretty much going to do the same thing as Lightroom. I just like Darkroom. I feel like it's a little bit more user friendly. I've been using it for quite some time. So um, I am going to open up that photo. And the only thing I use Darkroom for is if you hit these three little rings that are together, I use it to adjust the coloring of the photo. So usually I do not enjoy green in my photos, so I will take the green all the way down. I also don't really enjoy blue, so I'll pretty much bring that down to about there. And same with turquoise. Obviously if I'm wearing a blue dress, I won't tone them down as much. I'll probably tone them down still a little bit just to make the dress a little bit more neutral. Um, and then also with the... Uh, with the yellow. Um, sometimes I'll tone it down because it makes my hair a little bit um, less yellowy, a little bit more blonde and bright and you can also up it to make the blonde a little bit more bright. Um, and then also in the orange you can sometimes, um, if you're looking a little too orange, you can desaturate it or bring it down to make you a little bit more tan. Sometimes I like to bring both down just a little bit. I think that that looks good. So you can see the before and after just helps to make the photo look a little bit more neutral. I might just, I might just do that. Yeah. I think that looks good. So I'm going to export and save copy. I actually also forgot to say that also in Snapseed, another really great tool is the, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, again, the brush tool for desaturating. So say if you had like some like a big red stop sign in the back of your photo and you wanted that gone, you could just hit the saturation brush and bring it down to minus, I usually do minus 5, I find minus 10 really like super desaturates it to the point where you can notice it, but minus 5 and you can just go in and desaturate any areas of the photo that you want to desaturate. And it will help remove that 
sort of eyesore in your photo. Um, so once I save it from darkroom, then I will go into Anam, and this helps to plan out your feed. So I know a lot of people think that you know the feed isn't important, what's important is the actual photo you post. I honestly think that both are important. The photo you post, um, that's it, that is what is going to bring you know attention to your page, but then once people get to your page and they don't like your feed, it doesn't look cohesive or planned out or thought out or, or just it doesn't look nice, they're not going to follow you. So I feel like both are equally as important. So I'll just upload that photo into my feed and I can swap things around to see where I think that photo is going to go best and kind of plan everything out like that. So that's that photo. Um, I'll also do, I might not do the other one just because I feel like you got kind of everything you needed to get out of that photo, but just to give you another idea, um, this is a photo that we took obviously when we were in Beverly Hills, and same thing, I will do M5, I really love the way that it makes the photos look, and I'll just, for, again, with photos that don't have any people in them, I'll keep the filter pretty high, like I think that's pretty good, like a 10, good, 10.5, you can see the difference that it makes in the photo, it makes it look super pretty, and I'll just up the sharpness, and again, usually with photos that don't have people in them, I can, I'll bring the sharpness a little higher, just because, um, like there's no skin that you need to worry about looking scratchy or, and it just brings up the details and everything in the photo. So I'll up the sharpness and then contrast, I think, I think it's good. We'll leave the contrast and exposure I think is also good. And I also think that the white balance is good in this photo. So we're just going to save, save to camera roll, actual size. For a photo like this too, I probably wouldn't go into Facetune just because there is there's nothing that I really want to add more details into. There's nothing I feel like I need to smooth out, and there's nothing. There's no eyesores except for maybe <laughs> maybe maybe that lot full sign. I might want to patch it out, but honestly, I feel like it's fine. So I'll pretty much just go into darkroom because the photo has a lot of blue in it. So I want to kind of take the blues and the greens out. So the green, I'll pretty much take it almost fully down. Whoops. And the blues, I'll bring down just a bit in each one. I kind of want to keep a little bit of the blue, but just not too, too much. And you can see the before and after with the blue especially. Export, save, copy. I always save a copy just because I don't like to modify the original, just obviously in case if you ever want to go back and... Um, modify from there again, then you won't be able to. So, and then I'll just go into Anam and upload that photo. And you can swap things around and plan your feed from there. Um, the only other thing that I'll usually do is once I actually go into Instagram and I upload a photo. I'll just do any last minute tweaks right in Instagram. And another thing I should mention is that you should always, when you're posting on Instagram, make your photos, like don't make them square. Because if you make them full size, or as, as tall as they can be, it's gonna take up more of the, the person's screen when they're scrolling. And usually that has a bigger visual impact and they're more likely to actually like the photo. So, little tip for that. But anyways, if I go into Instagram, I will never use the Instagram filters, almost ever, ever, ever. I'll just hit edit, and it's usually the brightness. If I decide oh, I want it to be a little darker, I want it to be a little brighter, I'll change the brightness. And then also, um, sometimes I'll bring the shadows down if I want a little bit more depth in the photo. And then the sharpness, sometimes I'll add a little bit extra um, sharpness in the photo. But obviously, I'm not going to post this, so... So that is pretty much everything that I do to edit my photos. Um, I think it just takes a little bit of practice and some planning. Um, and everyone's, honestly, I've watched countless how I edit my Instagram videos back when I was trying to figure out what I liked. And everyone is a little bit different. I know there's a lot of girls that are really into, um, like, Teza, the uh, 
blogger Tessa and her presets are amazing. Uh, that's just kind of not my vibe, but a lot of girls it is and their feeds look amazing. So it's kind of just figuring out what you like and what works best for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know if you have any questions about editing or Instagram in general. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much guys. I burn your clothes, you put your fish through the wall.